Hey everyone, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day. We have such an exciting video and time together today. I will be listing journals from Alejandrina Beltrain. And I, I mentioned her in yesterday's video. She had given me the Happy Mail box, but there is a giant box of giant journals you aren't going to want to miss. In just a couple minutes, we're going to go to back inventory room and I'm going to do flip through so you can see uh, the inspiration. And then if you want to purchase any of them, they will be available in my shop, nevermorecreations17.com with free shipping to the United States, exact shipping worldwide. These are beasts. They're big. You wouldn't have ever seen anything like it unless you've seen one of her video restocks before on my channel. But even if you have, these are still absolutely amazing. So before I get into that, um, I really wanted to show you what I've been working on. So I, I have multiple things going in my craft room at once. Today, I'm just trying to enjoy my craft room, get things done, but not have pressure. If you remember, I said that my word for the year was stillness, and I'm working hard. It's not always easy to not be so rush, 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 rush. Um, I don't really think I get my, any more done being rushed. I just get really agitated and worn out. So I'm taking the time to do things I wouldn't always get the chance to do. And one of the things that I want to be doing is organizing different parts of my craft room. I tend to be a little bit of a craft hoarder, which I'm not trying to stop doing that. I like having extra supplies on hands on hand. However, I tend to throw them all in a box, put the box somewhere, and wait to come across it again in another day like a treasure hunt. While that is fun, it is not practical. And so I'm trying to organize small sections at a time, get things together. That way I know whether I need to repurchase things or not. And today I did stencils. I'm so excited about that. So I do have a stencil brand new for the shop. Um, I had bought these a while back, a whole bunch of sunflower ones, and I kept some for myself, but this truck with the sunflowers, it's a big one, so it would be beautiful for journal page spreads. I have lots of sunflower digitals, um, that you can purchase on my shop or purchase the prints, so sunflower breeze, the sun will come up, and sunny days, so you can type those in, get them digitally or printed, but this stencil is available in supplies. Um, I'll show you my stencil organization in just a minute, but since I have... I have a wooden crate here. Um, this is my to be listed crate. So but these are in the shop now. Um, I have playing cards with the lily pads. Look at how pretty those are. Um, so I have sets of those. And then I have two different sets of dangles. They are um, pinks and purples and peaches. I know you can't see it here, but just head over to my shop and the supply section. You'll be able to see close ups of these perfect for Valentine's Day. So two sets of that. And then just for fun, I made this adorable little um, envelope pouch with hand dyed paper and um, lined with vintage coffee dyed book page. And there are four ephemera pieces in here, journal cards called Little Snow White. And they are pages from a vintage Snow White book. So it's just a cute little extra. I felt inspired to make just one of them and it was sitting there on my desk this paper was and I was inspired and even though it's just one little item I decided to take the time and do it however that meant that I took my valentine journal that I was working on and put it in the to be completed bin probably shouldn't have done that but I'm trying to allow myself to play a little bit more and do what I want to do to a degree so anyway, hopefully I'll get back to that Valentine journal tomorrow or something like that, but got that. So back to the stencils. So two parts of what I did, I moved them. I used to have them just in a big bin and it was really hard to find anything. And then I remembered that I had purchased this expandable file folder at Aldi about a year and a half ago. Um, I purchased it for my mother-in-law uh, she was looking for an organizer for something for her work. And I purchased this because I saw it was only like $7 and it wasn't what she was looking for. So um, I kept it because cute organizer, right? And I just had a few collage pages in it, some printed pages that I was going to use for collage. 
kind of a waste. And that's part of what I'm talking about because I had collage pages stashed in here, collage pages in like half a dozen other areas. And I'm trying to combine things so I can see what I actually have. So I took the few collage pages out of here, put them with some other papers, and then this is the perfect size. I don't know how well you can see it, but I organized in here my stencils. So like one of these is all my Tim Holtz stencils and um, one is my bird stencils. And some of them are not necessarily by theme. Some of them are just by size, but I can flip through and find them a lot easier and they're much more protected in here. And there's still a lot of room for expansion. Um, I want to purchase more stencils. They're one of my favorite supplies. Absolutely love them. And I noticed that Amazon has some really pretty ones I haven't seen before. So I've added a set or two to my cart that I might order in the next month. We'll see. Don't want to spend too much money. Um, but, you know, a little bit here and there. So all my stencils are in here. And then, oh, except for the big, there was some big, big ones, like those sunflower ones. And then these vintage plana page. I got these from Peggy. They're amazing. And they're not just amazing for journaling. My son, my eight-year-old, used it for a school project. Um, it worked, he loved it. It worked perfectly. There are these little like frames and stuff that you can trace. So he was able to use this for, it was an Apple project, you know, like a poster board. It was like a half size poster board and he could use this and then write facts and stuff in it. So love these things. However, I don't use them a whole lot. Um, and they're too big to fit in there. Also that my extra sunflower ones that aren't in the shop that I hoarded for myself. They're too big for this. You can see that. So it just sits right next to it. But this is all my stencil stuff. So that was, well, whoops, that was part one. Part two was I wanted to be able to make some stencils for myself. And I do have, an, it's an older one by now, but you know, I'm going to use it till it doesn't work anymore. I have a silhouette portrait. Um, it is the smaller version. So it only does eight and a half by 11 paper, not the full 12 by 12. Uh, silhouette it's kind of like a I'm sure you guys know because I'm talking to crafty people but if you don't know it's like a cricket it's like a cutting machine um but it's this, there's silhouette and there's cricket I think cricket in the last few years has really risen as the top name but I remember when I purchased this I mean I, I was looking at both of them I also have a brother scan and cut um but you know one thing at a time problem with my silhouette I've had it for three, four years, I want to say. And I used it a bunch when I first got it. And then um, I don't have a ton of space. We have a small-ish house and uh, one, two, three, four, five people that live in it, plus my business. So um, I don't have a lot of space. And so I was like, I'll just keep it nearby, but it's not plugged in. Well, if you're like me, if something is not plugged in, you don't use it, like rarely. And I don't have time to pull it out and put it I just don't. So I was like, I'm going to take this as part of my stencil, um, not stencil challenge, but you know, organizing my stencils. I want to have this up and going so I can make myself some new stencils because I remember making a pineapple, some pineapple stencils back a few years ago. I just did it on cardstock, but I got to use it several times. Um, these aren't professional quality. Um, I, I know you can get stencil material. In fact, I may even have some stencil material somewhere in my absolute craft hoard. But um, long story short, sorry, sorry about that. I found a place for it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. This is real world crafting. crafting. Um, go to YouTube craft tours for pretty crafting. <laughs> um, right there. There it is. It's, it's little, but there's enough room for it to cut without me babysitting it. This is my eight foot uh, table that I got at Walmart and I craft here. Okay. So there's my window outside. It's super pretty here. Um, I'm sorry, the lighting's like trying to keep up, but this is where I actually craft. You can see my hot glue gun and my little craft stack of papers that we talked about the other days and my huge, this is like real life, real grungy desk. It's not pretty. This is real life um, desk stuff here. And so as I go here slowly to the left, I've got some scissors up on a magnetic strip. This I got at Aldi too, this little um, craft organizer. In fact, I bought it for my boys for toys. They used it for toys for a while. And then um, as they got older and their toys got bigger and all of that, 
um, we went to a different system for storing their toys and I moved this to my craft room. And that top bin that you see is now empty. This one right here had all of my stencils in it, but I had to dig. So that's where I took the stencils out. And then right here's where I put the silhouette. It had been so long since I had pulled it out or done anything with it that I had to wipe it all down and I had to find cords for it and plug it into my computer. And this doesn't even have Wi-Fi. It's that old. And um, plug it in, all that kind of stuff. And so hoping that it worked, I have <laughs> my own mat. This is just a, what's it called? Like a cutting mat, um, a flexible cutting mat that I use with it. It works fine. And um, I put repositionable spray on it and a glossy piece of, I'm going to glossy piece of cardstock. Come on. <clears throat> if I look like I'm wearing the same clothes that I wore yesterday, it's because I'm filming this like the same day I filled the other one, filmed the other one just later in the day. So not much has changed. So I took some heavier weight cardstock and I cut this out for a stencil. So um, this was from my silhouette library that I had purchased years ago and I cut it out. Now I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit because I had a hard time getting all the little pieces out. I need to adjust some of the settings and it is not perfect at all, but um, it is something. It's something. So it's cute and I'm going to see if I like it or not. And I thought I would take you along with me so hang on just a sec i'm going to flip the camera so you can see what i'm doing okay so you can see all the grunge and glue and ink and paint and on my big mess that i didn't prep for you but um here's my stencil and i want to show you what i'm gonna do here so this is my grungy cookie sheet that i've shown before and i talk a lot about um, this is where I do a lot of my smaller hand dyed papers. I wanted to show you this new color. Um, I really, really wanted to try some acrylic paint with hot water and mix it up and see what would happen. So that's what this is and it's red and it came out beautiful. Anyway, these are all papers that are just slightly damp that I have been working on today and I want to see what happens. Um, if I use the stencil and I want to try a couple different things real quick and then we'll go into the back room. Um, I'm going to try some distress oxide in walnut stain and just see what it looks like if I ink a couple flowers. I know that this is not going to last that long. It's not stencil material, but that's pretty. And then um, what happens, I'm thinking maybe more spraying it and if paint or spray dries on it, it might even make it, this is shake it. See, look at that rich color that I got from the paint. Wow. Wow. Oh, I'm obsessed. I'm going to put that there. Grab a scrap somewhere of something to kind of press it off. And then I'll just let that dry. But look at what I've done. All right. Success. So let this dry out and hopefully I'll get to use it again. Like I said, it might not last very long, but I have a fun new pattern here that I didn't have before. So these are still kind of drying, but I use them in lots of different ways. And they are actually just cutoffs from my shipping labels right now. I do not have a label printer. It is kind of one of the things that I would like to get this year. They're rather, they're a little pricey. And I've been trying to not buy one, but um, I think it'll save me some time in the shipping. And you know I'm working on that this year. Uh, right now I just use, you know, plain paper and cut it and cut it and then tape it. So these are, I used to throw this away. Uh, but I was like, why am I throwing this away? I can make beautiful things with it. So that's what I've been doing. And maybe that'll inspire you to repurpose some paper that you have laying around. All right, we need to head into the back room and look at these gorgeous journals because you are not going to believe it. So here we are in the back room about to look at these journals. And I don't even know if they are all going to fit in frame of my camera because this is one of the smaller ones but we're going to have a great time looking at these journals so they, they are, they're all available for sale in my shop 
nevermorecreation17.com. Free shipping to the United States, exact shipping worldwide. So this is the first one. It says love, and it looks like a little ticket. Isn't that cute? Little metal corners. I love the textured lace here on the front and the leather on the spine. Little um, doorknob post there for the closure. 155 pages. I always find it absolutely amazing how she is able to have these many pages put into one journal. There's no way that we would be able to take the time today to go through every page of all these journals because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, and they probably all have well over a hundred pages. But I really want you to be able to see her work and I hope that you guys won't give me nasty comments about this. I'm doing my best to show what I can in the time frame. You know, that makes sense. I know that um, people, you know, they like to see every pocket, every tag, every page. And I understand that. Um, I would want that as well. But sometimes it's just not possible because there's so many journals, so many pages. And I only have so much time that I can spend filming. So I do my best to give you an overview of them. Um, if I was just doing a video with one journal, it would be easy to go through every page, every pocket. But, you know, when you're doing huge journals and you have multiple journals and, and it's easy, um, I think, sometimes for um, people who are watching to say, you need to slow down, you need to show every tag, you need to, and I get that. I mean, I understand why they why they want that, but they don't really live in my life, in my world, and they don't know that I may only have 10 minutes before I have to go do the next thing. I, um, like, I'm on my way to the gym. I've got a certain amount of time that I have to film this, and I do the best I can, and it's not always perfect, but that's okay. I just thought I'd let you, you know, inside. I'm not trying to shortchange anybody here. Just trying to do my best with the time that I have every day. I don't have all day to, to um, film, even though that would be nice sometimes. Anyway, enough about that. This is incredible. And I love, just love these leather tabs. The look of this is so gorgeous and fantastic. So this one is Love. Um, and then we have this one. Would you look at this cover? We have 680 here. There's a banner that you could write something on and then collaged vintage pages. Isn't that cute? Here's the spine and look at the back. This is not a print. This is an actual page from a Sears and Roebuck um, catalog with chairs. There's no closure on this one. Look at the cute little letter tabs and things. I don't even know. Oh, it'll barely, it'll fit in frame. Barely, but it will. Okay. So, um, 146 pages. Again, more of that Sears catalog. I love her. Look at this. Basic coffee dyed scraps and tags. I think we forget sometimes to just add things like this to our journals because who's purchasing them, you know, they may want to decorate them. I know I forget that quite a bit. And I think that's wonderful that she put that in here. And I just, I can't imagine her paper stash. I really wish I could see her paper stash because it is not easy to get your hands on this many beautiful papers, especially uh, vintage type papers that she has here. You can tell a lot of them are authentic vintage, not just prints. And, and so she must have quite the stash. I wish I could pick her brain on that. So beautiful. This is wallpaper tip in. Yep. There is so much room to write in this, to just play. The pages are so large. I really think that um, having one of these journals to work in will really help you to become a better artist because you have these gorgeous canvases to practice all your techniques that you watch in YouTube videos or that you take classes or things that you just make up in your head. You know, you ever have that dream 
or uh, you wake up in the middle of the night and all of a sudden something just comes to you. You weren't even really thinking about it and you're like, oh, I want to try that. So this just gives you on-ending possibilities. You could find any texture, any any tone here to work on that you would be looking for. Love the corrugated heart. She's got labels. They're very soft tones. How beautiful. Look at that. Just simple little cards you can write on. That's beautiful washi tape. I have never seen that. Wallpaper. Wow. Incredible. So this one will be called 680. All right. Next, this one says live, laugh, love. Love the fabric. You can see there's a little pin here. It says vintage 98. There's a little metal heart. Um, leather again. Whoa, it's heavy <laughs> on the spine. Thought my wrist could support that. This one does have a closure. And there are 129 pages in this one. And all of those tabs. Look at those beautiful tabs. I see a lot of browns. The secret to having it all is knowing that you already do. Very good. I think sometimes we all need to remember that, you know, we have a direction we're going. We want our craft room to look this way or our house to look that way or our relationship to be this way or our finances to be that way. And we can get so caught up in trying to make it perfect that we forget to look around and see how beautiful even the messy things in our life are. So I'm speaking to myself because I've been been giving myself that pep talk recently just looking around and seeing how beautiful things actually are lots of cardstock lots of heavy cardstock pages that you can um stencil on and you can mix media techniques and sprays and coffee dyed and and, and everything else washi tape look at those love those neutral tags Love the big tag pages. There's so much in here. Absolutely beautiful color scheme. So live, laugh, love. Then there's family. And I love the way she did this cover. These 12 by 12, well, this is part of a 12 by 12 paper. They're really hard to use. These ones that have like a big full picture. Um, if you're not doing full 12 by 12 scrapbook layouts. So I love what she did here. It says family so pretty look at the cute tabs there's um lots of little charms there's bows butterflies flowers there are 98 pages in this one starting off with a gorgeous coffee dye i love how um different batches of coffee and tea dye all come out just a little bit differently yesterday i made um, a batch of tea I had some tea bags that I've had for a few years that I probably needed to do something with. So I made myself some iced tea and then I steeped um, tea for quite a while, filled up a little spray bottle and then um, dipped a bunch of pages they're drying right now um, in it. And so I, I can't wait to see how those actually dry. Crinkly, crinkly, um, using the tea instead of the coffee. Love that. Oh, just beautiful. And I love how creamy these pages are, how neutral they are, because you can really pop whatever color. Now, she has a lot of little bits of pink in this journal, but you can pull out blue or green. There's so much space here. You take this little um, bag and you can totally collage it, embellish it, add clusters and snippets. This would also be amazing to purchase one of these big journals to do you ever order from either my shop or other etsy shops and you like to order pre-made ephemera from other artists so if you get a, a pack um you know say i have fabric flips here from cindy anderson that i posted the other day and you know you get multiple in a pack you can put you know one on a page and then save the others for maybe your other journals and projects and you can notate like when you got it who you create or who created it as kind of an idea journal 
but also like a collection and kind of collecting artists work. So I think that would be so much fun. And since there are so many pages, you wouldn't really run out for a while. You could try to fill it up in a year or two years or something like that before you started another one. So many ways to use journals. So this journal says you are fabulous and it has a beautiful butterfly on it. There are 143 pages. Again, all of those tabs. And since her cover is a little bit longer than her pages, this is the perfect time to fill tabs. Sometimes I see journals created where the cover goes over the pages, but nothing is done on the edges. So it looks a little awkward, like the pages need to be longer or the cover needs to be shorter. But when that happens, take that opportunity to play. This almost reminds me of a collection of Rolodex cards, you know, like um, how they were really popular a couple years ago. They still might be, but I remember seeing them everywhere a few years ago where you can try all different, uh, you know, snippets and collaging and, and all that sort of thing, different color schemes and all of that. So, so many pages, beautiful bits and bobs. These, these are huge. I'll have the dimensions. She didn't write down any of the dimensions on her card, but I will measure these and then put the actual dimensions in the listing so you know how big uh, these journals are before you purchase that is cute. You could stick die cut flowers in that little pocket. There's a little, oh, that's, that's a, like a, oh, it's an acetate, but it could be a stencil. Some gorgeous journal cards there. I love these pages. So many of them are really thick. They're like that scrapbooking cardstock thick. Of course, she's put in other pages and envelopes and things, but a lot of them are super thick, really allows you to do a lot with it. It says wish. Got a couple book pages in here. That's pretty. So is that. Oh, is that open? Oh, it's a pocket. So this one is Fabulous, is the name of that journal. We are getting really, really heavy and big now. This one won't even fit in frame. You can see how large it is here. Um, this one looks like maybe it's a flow journal. I'm not... Wow, that's pretty. I'm not 100% sure. We'll check in a minute, but I can tell this twine is part of the binding look at all those pages. Oh my heavens. Okay. Uh, 268 pages. So the first thing I want to find out is how she bound this. Okay. That's what I was wondering. So they are pamphlet stitched. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it is not a flow journal. You cannot remove the pages. They're pamphlet stitched, but then they are um, bound how do I say that? What's the word for it? They're, they're bound with this, like you would a flow journal, uh, but they're also pamphlet stitched. I hope that makes sense. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. Look at this huge page after page after page. We have full big top loading bags. I mean, And this too, um, if you didn't want to work in it, uh, you would have kind of like an absolutely giant paper pad with all of these different pages. So you could even take, you know, some of the pages out for other projects since it's a little bit more of a, I mean, you can't pull the pages out, but um, this one makes me think more of a flowish journal. So that's why my mind went there is having all of these different pages to use in different projects as well. Oh, love. I mean, how do you even find this many pages? I don't know how she does it. It is incredible. Music papers, book pages, 
envelopes, guest checks. Just fantastic. I love these tree pages, map pages. There's no way I'm even showing a fraction of these pages. So you will have, I mean, just look, look at all these. Isn't that amazing? This is a heavy, heavy, heavy journal. Definitely something you want in your craft room. Oh, can you imagine that on the shelf? Wow. Just great, just great. Okay, running out of space here. Let's move that over. Next, oh, well, let's go even bigger. Wow, can you see that? It's got a gorgeous frame on the front. Burlap here. I'm trying to see. Okay, yep, it's side loading. You can put a photo in here if you wish. It is fabric covered. Look how pretty that is. 161 pages. Look at this upholstery. Gorgeous fabric here. Trying to get all this kind of in frame. And look at what she's done on the page edges. She's put some of these die cuts off the page, the butterfly wings, the flowers, so they peek out and kind of tantalize you, pull you in to keep flipping the pages. So this one looks like a lot of nature. I see flowers. There's Edith Holden. So here's like an example of the size. This is a normal Edith Holden page. So you can see how huge we have Tim Holtz paper, we have music paper, floral, coffee dye dyed papers, floral fabrics, um, bird book pages, tree book pages, flower book pages, I mean, calendars, everything you could want in a nature journal. And I feel like this is the perfect blend between um, having a journal for you to work in, because some people want a journal that's completely, completely done because they want to flip through it and it's more eye candy. And then some people want a journal that has nothing in it, not even a pocket so that they can build it up from scratch. And then um, there's people in between that are looking for journals, I love that coffee dyed paper, uh, that have parts done, inspiration. But then look, so you have a little inspiration here, but you have this whole area to turn it into something. So no matter where you open up in this journal, you're going to find a canvas to work on. Um, inspiration. And of course, for me, nature is my number one theme when it comes to paper crafting. Um, so I would love this. It would really pull me in. I'd be very inspired to play, to work. It's great. Look at this edging. I got little cards. Wow. I know somebody is going to just adore this. You really don't get many opportunities ever to get stuff like this. Look at those cards. Wow. Just beautiful. Our final journal here is just a little bit smaller, but it's quite thick. I mean, look at that. Look at those edges. Look at those tags, tabs, the fabric chosen. Isn't that exquisite? Oh, and it's very, very heavy. And I think I might have it upside down. I do. That's the back. That's the front. 218 pages. Whoo! We'll just do a quick flip through so you can kind of see. I love the fabrics that she's put on the edges and the trims. Her choices of papers. Can you see like little buttons peeking out? Oh, aren't these just yummy papers? I mean... Wow. I sure hope that my internet cooperates today to get these uploaded because I'm going to need to take quite a few pictures of these and it takes forever to upload. Still waiting on my Starlink internet, having a lot of trouble with internet and uploading. So supposed to be here in March, fingers crossed. Look at that. Ugh, mm, so yummy. Well, thank you so much for taking this time 
to look at her work. I am blown away. Every time she sends them, I, I don't think that, I think I forget how absolutely epic her work is. And every time she sends them, I'm just almost speechless. It's like, what? What? How do you even do that? So we are so incredibly honored and blessed to be able to see these journals. Um, and then of course, to have the opportunity to purchase them. So thank you very much for that. Um, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Well, hopefully tomorrow. There is a small chance there will not be a video tomorrow. Um, I have a lot of errands and things to do tomorrow, and I don't know how the day is going to play out. I hope I'll probably have like a really short video, but if if things just get out of hand with normal daily life, then um, I'll see you again on Friday. So see y'all later.